Matt, you mentioned uh, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Uh, switching over to the commander's defense, how do you see their young secondary being able to stop them? Uh, Emmanuel Forbes, yeah. the second-year player, kind of struggled last year, kind of a real thin frame. And then I know they drafted uh, Mike Sainer still out of Michigan in the mm -hmm. second round. Do you think those guys have a chance to hold up against Mike and Chris? Uh, hold, yes. Uh, if they hold. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For a penalty, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, look. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is – you talk about, like, the toughest draw you can get in a receiver room for a defense that's coming together. This this is as tough as it gets. Like, when you, you look at the receiver groups that this team has got to face this year, like Philly, okay, A.J. Brown, Devontae yeah, Smith, now Jahan um, Dotson. Like, yeah. okay, like, that's obviously going to be tough. But, like, you know, Tampa, I mean, that's that's a close second if – you know what I mean? And by the end of it, I mean, again, we don't know how Jahan's going to fit in Philly either. Like, by the end of it, it Jalen – can be everything that everybody hopes in Tampa. Like, this actually might end up being the best receiving group that this team faces all season, which is good in some ways, obviously, right? But it's, it's bad for, you know, being three days away from having to do it. It's, it's going to be it's gonna be interesting, I'll put it that way, because, you know, on top of this team being, like, the worst defense in yards allowed and all that stuff, it's the worst secondary in yards allowed per play and, and per game. And really, three-fifths of that starting secondary from last year are back, right? Emmanuel Forbes, Benjamin St. Juice, Quan Martin. Now, Quan started off last year as like a nickel slash free safety at the end of the year they basically committed him to free safety this staff has made him a pure free safety with mike sander still coming in and mike sander still has certainly looked like a player above his years right he's definitely a mature player kind of a pros rookie uh type of guy but like the dude is small and at the end of the day like if you're small you're small he plays bigger but i don't think he plays chris godwin big right so that's a that's a big question there how are they going to help him you know with if, whether it's jeremy chin over the middle trying to help Raquan Martin keep in the top coverage on him because, you know, like, like if, if you have that type of a size mismatch, and it really doesn't matter who's in the slot, you know, other than maybe Trey Palmer, like you've got that type of advantage. And then, yeah, I mean, Mike Evans against Ben St. Juice, Emmanuel Forbes, you know, it, it's, it's going to be rough, you know, and that, that front seven for, for the commanders are definitely going to have to get home to Baker as much as possible to try to set them back and make your coverage assignments a little bit easier and, you know, second and long, third and long, all that stuff. So we'll see how that's effective. But I think that's where – like, if the commanders end up winning this thing, I think a lot of the narrative is probably going to be, man, that O-line really kind of showed their relative inexperience together in Tampa um, because, of the, because of the pressure that gets in. Because if Baker's got time to just sit back there and do his thing, I mean, 24 points, like, minimum, right? Like, I think 24, yeah. 27 points is, is probably what you're looking at. And to ask a new offense with a rookie quarterback and an offensive coordinator calling his first game with this staff, like, to ask them to generate 24 to 27 points their first week out in the Florida heat against a super aggressive defense. I don't know if that's realistic. So 